Hi, my name is Gabe Garms. I'm an instructor at Ravens Roots Naturalist School in Cedro Woolley, Washington. And today I want to talk to you about the importance of biochar and how you can easily make it at home for under $15. Now before we get into making the stoves, let's actually talk about what biochar is and what we're using it for specifically. Here's a close-up shot of a, a couple pieces that we created through one of our production stoves on the farm. It is pretty close to pure carbon and it could be used for purifying water. It could be used as an alternative to sawdust in a composting toilet system. It can uh, be used to pull toxins from the body. But here at Raven's Roots, we're primarily using it to amend soil. High quality biochar makes almost a glass-like sound when it's dropped against a hard surface. Here's a smaller piece of biochar than the ones you saw in the last frame. And if I take my mic off and get it down here, I'll let you guys hear. I'll just drop it from a short distance onto a hard surface. You can hear almost that glass-like sound. Coming back to using biochar for soil amending, Amazonian indigenous tribes, this used to be a primary ingredient in their soil building process. A good amount of biochar, they also used pulverized animal bone and organic matter. And it's been the finest soil that's uh, ever been discovered by mankind. And what makes it so special is, think about it, after it comes out of the stove that I'm going to show you how to build in a minute, it's pretty close to pure carbon. And think of biochar as a black hole. It's going to suck in all of the nutrients, the water, and the microbes that are in the soil. So I don't want to apply it directly to uh, my garden beds right after it comes out of uh, the stove. I want to both charge it and inoculate it uh, before I'm using it into the garden. Charging it means you're adding nutrients. Some people like to do uh, like a, a fish emulsion or liquidized kelp if something you're trying to put nitrogen back into the soil. Um, and then inoculating it means putting uh, microbes uh, into it. And what we do here at the farm is after we cook these in the stove, we're crushing these large pieces into really uh, smaller, finer particulates, creating a lot of surface area. And then either putting it in our compost piles or putting it in our compost tea. If you put it right into the garden without charging it or inoculating it first, you're not going to get any production. It's going to steal all the water and the nutrients and the biology from the plants for somewhere between one and two years. So we always want to charge it uh, and inoculate it first. And you can do that by putting it in your compost pile or compost tea. Um, compost pile for about six months, usually compost tea for um, roughly about 15 to 20 minutes. So now I want to get back into making the stove itself. There's three components to the stove. All of this material shouldn't cost you any more than 10 or $12, even at an expensive hardware store. First is your outer burn container. Here I have a paint can, a, can, a one gallon paint can. And as you can see, I've got, I used a 3 8 inch drill bit. You can also use a half inch drill bit. And I drilled uh, four holes at the bottom of the one gallon container and about eight, seven or eight up at the top. Uh, no more than uh, roughly an inch from the bottom and the top lip. And you can see I didn't put drill any holes into the bottom. That's the only thing that I did to the paint can. You can buy these new. I wouldn't recommend using a paint can that has that had paint in it uh, previously, but most hardware stores will sell unused one gallon containers. And then Inside this one gallon uh, paint can will go a one quart. They'll also sell, here's a new one that I just created. Uh, it has to have a sealable lid on it. And the only thing, I'm not drilling any holes into the sides. Uh, this is our inner retort or a one quart paint can. The only thing I'm doing to the one quart paint can, as you can see, I've taken much smaller drill bits and I've put in around eight holes on the bottom of this. This is our inner retort. And then the last piece will be some stove piping. Uh, this could be either three or four inch stove piping. It just needs to be twice the size of your uh, outer burn container. Now we're getting ready to do an actual burn. 
And we're going to use our production stove on the farm. Um, so in our last segment, uh, I showed you the inner retort, that one quart can uh, with the eight small holes drilled into the bottom. Um, well, I, I think you should start building your first stove with just these $10 materials, the one gallon paint crayon and the quart can. Eventually, you're going to want to scale up if you're doing any kind of mass compost production. Um, so here is one of our production stoves. This is the inner retort for our production stove, which is a little bit, roughly around 25 gallons. Um, and it's got a sealable lid on the top, just like the one quart can. And then what I do is I fill it with feedstock or dried milled ends. And what we do is you can go to any kind of a furniture maker. Uh, we, uh, I go to um, a local company that builds manufactured homes and they give me milled ends for free. And you just want to make sure they're not treated and that there's no more than 20% moisture in the wood. And this is the container where the biochar is going to be created, an inner retort. Once I've filled it up with my milled ends, then I want to put the lid on, and then I'm going to uh, put the seal on and bolt it, and we'll continue on with the next step. So here is our inner retort that's been completely filled almost to the top with those milled ends. And here we've got uh, a seal. Your inner retort has to be able to get a tight seal up top because that's what those holes on the bottom are for is once this barrel heats up in the outer burn barrel, once we start the fire, it's going to push all the gases but the carbon using pressure um, out of those bottom holes and, and burn it. So here you can see we bolted uh, the top. Whatever inner retort that you use, just make sure it's very important that you can get a, a nice tight seal on the top. And now let's get ready to put this in the uh, outer burn container. So now here's our production outer burn container. This, this is uh, the bigger version of the one gallon paint can uh, that I showed you earlier. You see we've got our eight holes up at the top and our four at the bottom. And I want to make sure that the bottom is completely flush, flat, uh, with no holes in it, just as you see here in the video. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and sit our inner retort uh, flush on the bottom of this in the center. So now we're going to take our inner retort that is full of feedstock and seal it. And we're going to place it flush on the bottom in the center of our outer burn container. So it's sitting in the direct center. Now we're going to get some other feedstock, like such. I get some bigger ones and start filling in the outsides. I'm going to go ahead and fill this back up and I'll show you the next step. Okay, so here is our outer burn container completely filled with feedstock. I want to pack it really tight all around our inner retort in the center. You want to pack as much in as possible because we want to burn this fire as hot as possible. You get higher quality biochar when you do that. So now that we're all set up, let's get ready to start the fire right on top of the inner retort. Okay, so now we have got a coal base. You want to really burn the fire hot up top and get a nice coal base because now we're going to put on the chimney and start to create a draft. And what's going to happen is the draft is going to start to get um, all this feedstock we put in here. It's going to light it up and it's going to burn really hot. And the coal base is going to move down the barrel. It's a top down, it's called pyrolysis. And as the coal base starts to move down and it's burning really hot, it's going to create tremendous pressure in that inner retort and it's going to push out all uh, the gases that um, are contained in the wood well, with the exception of the carbon and push them out all those little small holes we drilled in the bottom of the inner retort. But in order to get the fire that hot uh, we need to create 
uh, a draft and put on the chimney. So I've got a coal base over the entire top. And then now, you want to wear gloves for this because the chimney gets pretty hot. And now, I'm going to use these bricks because we're on some uneven land to pull down uh, the chimney. And as you can see, now the fire is really starting to roar. Notice the flame will start to slowly come up towards the top and you'll see the coal base uh, burning down. Uh, always have some bricks because you don't want to touch this. This is going to be red hot. and It'll probably take about 30 to 45 minutes and I'll let it cool off and I'll open up my inner retort and I'll have biochar. So after a burn is completed, uh, should be about between a half an hour and 45 minutes, we're going to be left with this beautiful, high grade, high quality biochar. Um, but before you put it into your compost pile or your compost teas, pulverize it down. Um, I use a sledgehammer and put it in a big barrel, wear a mask, um, and I'll pulverize it into really small pieces. It could take uh, a higher number of microbes and nutrients if uh, you create more surface area by pulverizing it. Um, so hopefully, um, I've got you inspired to go and build your own stove uh, and make biochar yourself. And if you have any questions, you can contact us at ravensroots.com. Again, my name is Gabe Garms, and we have classes in Cedra Woolley, Washington, uh, both short and extended courses all throughout the year. Thank you for watching.